yes sir that dj that y'all listening to right there who's that dj and like that that is dj ryan wolf family y'all family well what's going on what's e what's up how y'all feel out there lockout men here back again with another podcast another podcast interview for you guys and uh right now it's uh it's sunny today it's real sunny today unfortunately the the virus of 2020 is still holding it down and not everything is all open as you guys know you know you guys stay safe out there well today i am coming at you guys with another podcast interview welcome to the lockout man podcast show and today's young lady comes by way i think i found her on instagram i believe hmm i think i found her on instagram but yeah we've been going back and forth back and forth and now she is here uh she is uh 26 years old she's from florida she's been driving just about the same amount of time as i've been driving five years she's a mother and both her and her kid rides with her on the truck this uh bring to the show hold on i gotta switch up right quick there we go this uh bring to the show miss driving <laughs> what's up what's up <laughs> miss driving where where you come up with that name where where you get that name from You said it's spare the moment. Was it just something that you decide to get with uh when you got into when you got into the driving or just something to put on your Instagram page when you started it? Uh something to do on the Instagram. I had a couple of different games and that was just the one that stuck. Okay, okay. All right. So you've been driving for about five years. Let's go back a little bit. What uh where are you from? Mm -hmm. It's just south of Tampa. I usually just say Tampa because a lot of people don't know Riverview. Yeah, I know it's a lot of small. It's a lot of small cities in 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 a lot of these bit cities. I'm 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 a resident of Ohio, and so far, I mean, since I've been a driver, I I've seen all these cities that I ain't even heard of. All these small cities I ain't even heard of. I, I while I was driving, I didn't realize that there's a city called White, uh, White, what is it? White House Court, White House Court, Ohio. That is an actual city. <laughs> like I'm like, damn it, man. All right, so you from Tampa, Florida, man? How was it growing up in Florida, man? Being around all them, uh, all them amusement parks and. And all that good stuff, man. How how was it growing up down there? Uh, it was definitely fun. Uh, for sure, hot. <laughs> definitely hot and humid. But the amusement parks are pretty fun. I've been to uh, most of them and stuff like that. A lot of tourist stuff. Is it is it Florida? Is Florida portrayed right in in CSI Miami? Um. How do they portray it like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's one of my favorite shows and all like that. But they, you know, Miami Day, uh I forgot I forgot uh the guy's name, but he always come with the cool opening. Monday. So the question becomes, Alex, was the mob sent to draw us to the crime scene? Or sent to destroy it? And putting on the shades. But I always wondered if Florida was always portrayed, you know, with the with the with the skylines and the and the views that they, you know, that they were able to film uh you know, to film uh, CSI definitely Miami. Definitely depends on where you go. Oh, okay, okay. Some places are nice, you know, some places not nice. So um so down in Florida, man, is 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 it is it is it heavily is it heavily Cuban down there? You know, I saw Scarface. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of diversity of people and stuff 
stuff. But yeah, they, they do have a large Cuban area in there, especially in Tampa. They mm-hmm. have the Cuban cigar factory, and they always got these Cuban sandwiches. That they're definitely the best. If you have to go to Florida, I would highly recommend getting a Cuban sandwich. Okay, okay, Florida. Would you now? Let me ask you this: I, you, you was born and raised down there, right? Yeah. All right. So, being born and raised down there, would you ever live anywhere else? Uh, I plan on it. I haven't figured out where I want to live, but I don't. I don't think I want to live in Florida anymore. It's just it's, it's too crowded and it's getting boring. I like I like the mountains better. Uh, okay. Now, now you being being that you're a driver, uh, and you stay down in Florida, how hard is it to come up out of Florida with freight? Uh, it depends on how cheap you want to go. <laughs> um, cheap out of Florida, uh, freight out of Florida is pretty cheap. So sometimes you might have to wait an extra day than you originally planned to leave, and it, it don't get much better. And then probably about a dollar fifty pop, maybe. All right. So, so, so it is true because a lot of drivers, uh, a lot of companies don't even like hiring out of Florida because of that. So, are you are you a company driver or are you a, you or you a lease op or you an owner operator? Um, sort of like a company driver. I just drive for an owner operator and. Truck and run the so sort of like a company driver. Eventually, I'd like to buy my own and you know build the same ride as him. Oh, okay, so you so so you uh, so you drive for uh, a owner op. Yeah. How is it? How how is it driving for driving for a owner op versus driving for companies like uh, Swift, uh, Snyder? How how is it different than driving with a a, a a independent? It really depends on the actual person. This is actually the third owner operator I've driven for because mm-hmm. uh, I decided a year ago to go off the road with my daughter, and I didn't think that there was going to be any companies that would allow me to go with. And I uh, I had I was with two other owner operators, and they were both leased on the company. They, they were really, really, really bad as far as, like, their trucks. They both had 2006 Freightliner Columbias. And, you know, no, no bad talk on the Columbia, but it, it, they, they just weren't taken care of. They were really bad trucks. And I broke down in those trucks a lot, and uh, those owner-operators they didn't pay at all, like, barely. I, last year, I only made, like, $25,000. They, they, were, they were really cheap. And then, luckily, I found this guy, and, I couldn't be happier. I get really good paychecks. It's a 2018. It's got an HQ on it, and I I love this truck. I really like driving for this guy. So, so where do you come? Where where do you find these guys at? I mean, I, it sounds like you 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 know you're doing your homework and you're doing your, you know, you're doing your research and everything. But where where do you come up to find uh, independent owner operators to drive for? Uh, the first two, uh, I went through Craigslist, made a couple of Craigslist posts, and uh, they contacted me through there. Uh, and then this last guy was uh, a friend of a friend, basically. Okay, okay. So the first, so you've been driving for five years, and you just recently, so this is recently, you just got with the new guy. Uh, have you driven for any? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You. Mega carriers? Yeah, have you driven for any uh for any mega carriers or anything like that? Uh yeah, I actually started out with Warner. I drove for Warner for about a year and a half, and uh, I team drove two different times, and I was team drove with the guy, and we were in a relationship, and <laughs> uh, surprise little baby. <laughs> Okay, okay. Did you did you get your license through Warner or you got your license somewhere else? I went through I went through Roadmaster. Roadmaster. So that's yeah, Roadmaster is owned by is owned by Warner. Was uh being that you dri- being that you drove for Warner, was it a was it a out of pocket expense or Warner paid for your uh license? 
Uh, when I went to the school, um, they told me that if you have good credit or no credit, you can start off paying no money. Or if you have bad credit, that it would be a little bit of money down. And at that time, I didn't have any credit. I was so young. And uh, I was actually able to start for free. And I think overall it was $7,000. It was supposed to be paid monthly. And Warner was supposed to, um, they were supposed to, you know, pay a little bit each month. But they didn't really do that. And uh, it's been a couple of years since then. And I contacted a credit repair company. And they actually had it taken off my record. Oh, okay. So Warner was, so Warner was, pretty much messing up the credit because they didn't but you you drove for warner for what you say a year and a half so usually contracts or paybacks is is usually within that year why warner didn't um why warner didn't honor their their end of the bargain i'm not really sure i mean they might have it was just so so low that they were paying on it that it really didn't seem so they was like hitting you off every paycheck. They was only like what doing like fifty, a hundred dollars or something like that. <laughs> yeah, companies like like the company I used to work for back in the day where I started. I started with US Express, and one of their big uh, things that they was talking about in the uh, in the orientation when they came out to the school was that. You know, they give you full to it. Well, she said full tuition reimbursement. So at that time, my out of pocket expense for the school was my out of pocket expense for the school was like uh, 56, 56 K or yeah, about 56 K right there. But um, I went to uh, went to U.S. Express thinking that they was going to give me the whole 56k. So when I when I got my first paycheck and only noticed that they only take like they only give me like $150 and I'm over here like okay, where's where's the tuition bonus sign on bonus at? So I called up the I called up payroll and I was like uh I thought you guys give tuition, but uh, y'all y'all pay the tuition. It was like, oh yeah, well yeah, well, we only give you one hundred and fifty dollars a month towards your tuition. A hundred and fifty dollars. I was like, well, my tuition was like fifty six k, like you know five thousand six hundred dollars. You mean tell me I got a that that won't be paid up until like three years? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh man, that's that shit sucks. I said that sucks. So so Warner was just Warner was just only paying if that for you into your into your into your in into your payments for your schooling. When you left Warner, yeah. when you left Warner, uh did they try to did they try to hinder you uh from getting another uh, driving job, you know, with that, with that, uh, with that payment lingering over your head. No, uh, when I left Warner, I want to say I was like five or six months pregnant, and um, I stopped driving for eight months, and then I went local. But yeah, Warner, they were they were a really good company. Honestly, I could have been making two hundred dollars a week with Warner. I still would have been happy. Like it, it was me like at that time it wasn't really about the money i just i really enjoyed the travel oh, okay so what was so what was your inspiration five years ago what was your inspiration to in getting into trucking you know since you just mentioned that um okay so when i i was a uh, my older sister and my younger sister and myself were adopted by my grandma when i was seven years old and uh, my grandma moved us to a uh, mobile home park uh, and I-75 was just beyond our backyard. And when I was seven or eight years old, I used to go in the back room and stare out the window at night and watch all the traffic on the road. And I liked everything, but the semi truck always just stood out to me. Obviously, you know, the size, the chicken lights, and the sounds and whatnot. And uh, I always liked them. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a regular mechanic growing up. Then I got a little bit older. I was like, well, I want to be a decent mechanic, you know, go big or go home. 
And I think I was about 17 or 18, and I was like, well, why fix them when I can just drive the truck? So I actually, I actually called Roadmaster when I was 18, and I don't know if it was different around that time, but they told me that you have to be 21 years old. I know now at least you can be 18 and drive in state. I don't know if it was the same issue at the time, and they just didn't tell me. But, yeah, I had to wait till I was 21. I'm surprised because when I went to – uh when I went through Tri C Community College, uh, Truck Driving Academy, we had an eighteen year old uh student there. So I'm surprised that they that they wanted you to be twenty one years old. Well, maybe some companies want you to be, you know, twenty one years old. But yeah, eighteen is is the legal limit that you can get in, but you just won't drive out of state. You'll be you have to be a local driver. So you won't be you you have to go intrastate instead of interstate. You know, there's I when they told told me about the two different ones, I'm sitting in the chair like, damn, there's two different things to this, man. What's what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so you say you was uh so as a so as a little girl growing up, you was uh you was just you you was just some uh inspired just by the trucks going past so you you figure you you see yourself in one of them oh yeah how did you and like it, it was funny too um, hmm sorry i i didn't hear uh, i didn't hear you kind of cut out there i'm sorry about that uh it's funny too because um uh, i uh when i had turned 21 i had contacted roadmaster i called them a couple of times and i didn't answer and one night i went online and filled out like a little mini application and that night i actually had a dream that they called me and i went in person in this dream and they told me a price and i, I remember crying and i actually woke up from the dream with real tears on my face and they, they did call me the next day and it actually went pretty well and uh i was you know getting ready they were walking me out getting ready to walk back to the car and i said can i see a truck up close they're like yeah yeah sure and I promise that was my first time even being up close to a truck. It was it was so cool. I really before I actually went there, I never knew that they were so big on the inside and had all these different amenities. Mm -hmm. So you didn't. So when, since you chose uh, Roadmaster back in the day, uh, was you was you able to to test out in the manual or they they test you out in the automatic? Uh, no, they had manuals. Um, they didn't have any automatics at that time. Because I remember there was this one person, and they, for some reason, they couldn't pick up the whole concept of shifting. And they were like, I think they said down in Fort Myers or something like that, they had trucks down there where he could learn in an automatic. They were like, you got to go there. <laughs> All right. So yeah, at that time, Roadmaster, they didn't have uh, automatics that are. So how about, how about you? How, how did you, how, uh, how, how did you uh, grasp it, uh, driving the manual? How was how did it feel the first time? Uh, it felt a little bit different. Um, it was like a week or two before I went to Roadmaster that I actually had just barely learned how to drive a stick shift car. I remember sitting in class and they were like, "Who knows how to drive a stick shift car?" And I, I was just sort of like, "How to raise my hand or not?" You know, because I had just learned. And, but they were like, "Whoever didn't raise your hand, it's going to be easier for you." Because you know, they were explaining how it was different different techniques on shifting the truck and when I was shifting the truck it was it is definitely you know some practice to learn on it but it was it was bad all right was there any other was there how was your experience with the with, with a trainer at Warner because I, I figured especially in your first year coming into the into the game you had to go out with a you had to go out with a trainer so, uh, how was your experience there? Uh, well, I went to a uh, Lakeland terminal for Werner, and uh, I was waiting for a trainer. They they actually found me one, but it was uh, somebody that was doing regional. Mm -hmm. And I told the company, I said, look, I think it's really nice, but I'm not looking to go regional. I would prefer to have somebody over the road so I can get a mountain experience. So, uh, they sent a couple of us out to Dallas, and uh, I was out there for a couple of days, and Finally, I get the phone call that my trainer was in, and I, I meet up with my trainer. It was an older guy, and he's like, I'm a million miler owner operator, and I have a 13 speed. And I was like, Well, I don't know how to drive a 13 speed. He's like, You don't, but you can learn. 
and he was a pretty cool guy. I think uh, he, he stopped training after I did, and it, it was a little bit difficult because being born and raised in Florida, I had never saw snow until I became a truck driver. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did training August and September, and you know they don't really have snow out. So I was a little bit nervous, and I was uh, considering going back into like a mentorship program. Mm-hmm. You know, not like a, a training, but kind of like TV sort of, but having somebody that sort of mentoring you so that I could get experience driving in the snow. But I ended up finding somebody, and he teamed up. And it was really funny. The first time I saw snow, uh, my, my teammate was in the back sleeping. I didn't want to wake him up. And I was in New Mexico. I was getting close to Arizona. And I saw some snow on the ground, but it was like dirty snow. <laughs> And I was wondering, you know, is that sand or is that snow? And I thought about getting on the CB radio and asking, but thankfully I didn't. And uh, I pulled over at the Wealth Center and I got out. You know, I took the little glove off, felt it, and, you know, tasted it like they do in the movies and made a little snow, man. It was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so you know, <laughs> you, you know, um, you know, according to popular beliefs, Training in the wintertime is way better than training in any other seasons. You know, in the wintertime, you definitely come up against some incumbent weather, snow, sleet, black ice. You you know, by you training in the wintertime, you you would definitely get a better appreciation of of being uh focused and being well aware of what's around you in the wintertime versus, you know, in uh versus any other seasons. So so did you respect that as far as as far as getting that training out the way? Uh yeah, definitely. I'm I'm really glad that I did have somebody with me the first time, you know, I got to try so, so I probably I probably would have been pretty scared. <laughs> All right. So you said you uh so you said you 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 got pregnant while you was a truck driver. So, the your yo the baby's father is is he a truck driver or was you was you uh was you going out with somebody uh before you got into truck driving? Uh, yeah, he was a he was a truck driver. Um, I teamed up with one guy and we were in a relationship. It didn't work out. I was like, I promise I'll never see I'll never team again. And, I broke that promise, and I found uh, my kid's dad. We ended up teaming together, and mm-hmm. there I got pregnant rather quickly. And, yeah. How how old was you when you got pregnant? Because you said you stepped out of trucking for about eight months. I was twenty two. Oh, uh, you was twenty two. How's your baby now? How how is he now? Because I is it is it a boy or a girl? Because I hear I, I hear them in the background. Uh, it's a little girl. Uh, it's a little girl. So when when you when when you became pregnant and you stepped out of trucking, uh the reason for you to for the reason that you got back into trucking and went independent was because you wanted to bring your kid along with you? Uh yeah, I did uh I did local for two years and Ever since I had found out I was pregnant, I, I honestly, I never wanted to stop doing over the road, but I didn't think that it would be safe for her at the time. And then she turned two years old, and I decided, like, yeah, I, I would like to go back over the road because, one, that way, you know, I don't have anybody else raising her. I can raise her to, you know, my specifications and beliefs and stuff. And, um, two, you know, it'll save money. Because I plan on, like, staying over the road, just saving up my money. You know, I want to get my car paid off and eventually start buying a couple of trucks and it's a it's a high dream and it's a long shot but I'd, I'd like to stop driving within two years i want to buy a couple of trucks and you know, hire a couple of drivers by the time she's ready for school i'd like to uh retire off the road i want to homeschool her anyways but i would i would like to homeschool her like at a home so not in a truck okay that's what's up that's that's a that's a goal that's a goal to, to achieve and it, i mean you know and being that your kid is growing up and your kid is with you, you can uh, you can achieve that goal. Uh, before you went with uh, independent, oh, yeah. before you went with independent contractors, who who was the companies that you tried to get with uh, that sort of turned you down from from not dri- I mean from not driving because of your kid. Uh, I had a couple of companies that I 
Um, there was uh, honestly most of them. Um, I was involved in an accident in 2018 when I drove local, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't get any tickets or citations. But because of that, you know, it's like on my DAC report, on the insurance report, there was a few that would say like, "Yeah, you might be able to bring her," but then they was like, "No, I don't think we can hire you at the time." So it was a, it was kind of like a second chance type of opportunity that I found, you know, the owner operator that I'm with now. Now some now they say some owner operators in some black ops companies they they really don't go by your DAC report. Um, the owner operator I'm sure you told the owner operators that you were in an accident. How serious was the accident that you was in? Um, I, there was no fatalities. Um, there was two cars that had to be towed. I, it wasn't terrible. Uh, you, yeah, what happened? Little, what, man. what happened in that accident? A uh, car got in front of me and slammed on their brakes, and uh, I, I slammed on my brakes. And at a time, I was like, you know, it, it was in the process. For some reason, when something bad happens in my life, luckily it goes in slow motion. So I had a little bit of time to think, and I, was, I remember thinking, I'm not going to have enough time to stop. So I actually tried to go around the car, and the trailer is what caught the car. These 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 yeah, four these it. these four wheelers out here, man. It, it, well, it's a blessing that you was able. Was you pregnant at the time? No, uh, that's what I was local. She was about. She was. She had. Well, I had just celebrated her first birthday like two months prior, and it sucked because that accident actually happened before my twenty fourth birthday. Wow. When I am, I I am so happy that you that 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 you're here to tell the story of of an accident. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's unfortunate. Uh, stuff happens. You know what I'm saying. So definitely, guys, be careful out there. You know, just just it 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 is 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 it is crazy. So. Did they put that on you as a as a at fault accident or a no fault accident or you don't know? Yeah, I'm not really sure. But uh, uh but like uh, I do I do believe everything happens for a reason. I was uh I was trying to leave that company. I was moving around for other company. I was actually going to go drive dump trucks, but I was young at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, company I was making like five hundred dollars a week at most. And I was on a, that was only like a, a handful of times, so I was, I was trying to find something better. Uh, the company, they, they did end up, they did end up terminating me because of the whole situation that was going on. And about six, they waited six days to tell me I was terminated, so I was thinking, well, maybe there's a chance they're going to keep me, and you know, I'm not really sure. Right. And they called me one day, it was like nine o'clock at night, they called me like, I'm sorry to tell you you're terminated. And I was, I was really, really upset. Wait, they terminated, they, night, they I, did I a, fr- wait, 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 they did a Friday on you? They 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 did a Friday on you. They terminate you. Why you, why on your off day? Yeah, at night. At night, damn it, man, that's yeah. that's crazy. I thought, I thought. That's crazy. Oh, I was I was I was out having a beer, you know, enjoying with the coworker. Like my coworker invited me out. I kept asking the whole time, like, did you know they were gonna fire me? Like, no, 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 I swear. Wow. But uh, I went home. Uh, I was I was really upset, and uh, I went on Craigslist, good old Craigslist, mm-hmm. and I stayed up a couple hours, and I just saved up. You know, I looked up truck driving jobs that were local because you know the accident was fresh. My baby was only eight years old, and since you, I saved about ten different phone numbers. Since you use Craigslist, and uh, I listed it like since since you use Craigslist to <laughs> to to do your research for uh for driving jobs. Would you would you highly recommend Craigslist to 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 the new jets out here, uh, to use that when they're looking for doing their researches on jobs, on driving jobs? Uh, well, what I would say, like, if somebody finds something on Craigslist and they think it might possibly have potential, um, I would definitely get more in depth. Like, you know, say you find a company and they got an add on Craigslist, you know, you might talk to them. Definitely, you know, go on. And, you know, people search their names and, you know, search reviews and stuff like that. All right. For sure. So how has it... Companies and people, they're, they're going to tell you what they want to hear to hire you, and then mm-hmm. it's completely different. 
So how has it how has it been for you being a mother, uh, being a mother and a and and a over the road truck driver? What's life like uh, with you and your baby over the road? Probably more easier than you would think. Um, I decided I was going to go over the road. I finally, you know, found the guy that the first one that was going to allow me to take her, and it was funny too because they did tell me that I could take my daughter with me. And they didn't tell me that the company he had his truck lease on to would say otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, that turned into a little bit of trouble and stuff. But uh, I tried asking all my friends and all my family members. You know, I was trying my damnedest to find somebody, anybody, to ride in the truck with me for a week, maybe two weeks, because I, I thought it was going to be really difficult. And uh, I couldn't find anybody. And it was actually really easy. Um, for this truck, at least, I got a, a microwave fridge. Um, TV, I got a, a griddle and an instant pot and a toaster, so I'm able to cook in the truck for her, and uh, I got her toys. It's it's really easy, and she loves to travel. Like, every time we're out of the truck, like, I, we just recently went on whole time, and she's like, I want to get back in the truck. What's the what's the reaction? Well, first thing first, how how tall are you? Because I'm, I'm looking at your Instagram pictures, and it looks like you're a small one. How, how tall are you? I'm five foot five. Oh, you 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 five foot nothing over there, man. What's the reaction like? Uh, you getting out of the truck with your kid when they see when you at the shippers and receivers and the and and the fuel stations. What's what's everybody reactions when they see you? It's either one of two things. Either people don't really you know pay attention. They just look the other way. They don't really care. Or uh, a lot of people will look over at her. And they smile. I feel like it makes their day when they see a little one. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, I, I haven't got any negative reactions yet. Okay, okay. Um, at the shippers and receivers, uh, you you don't leave your baby in the truck when when you go in, do you? Um, some places will not allow her to be in. Um, I this truck. I have a. I have an actual key for the truck, and then I have two of the remote, two of the remote keys. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll lock the truck, run inside, you know, go get the paperwork, check in, and come back. So, yeah, some places they won't allow her to be inside, you know, for a day or two. All right. All right. Well, truck drive. Well, driving dial. I love that name, driving dial. What would have been your What would have been your plan B? If you if you wasn't if you couldn't get into trucking, oh man, that's a I, I probably would have went and tried to be a mechanic. Maybe I'm not. I'm not really sure. I don't think I've ever thought of myself not being a truck driver. I mean, before I started, before I was driving trucks, I was working at fast food, and I remember I finally got my hands on the idea of becoming a truck driver, and uh, I think it was my second week. I finally quit that fast food job. And I told myself, I promise, never in my life will I ever go back to work. Never, ever, ever. That should, so that, that should be so everybody's aspirations. <laughs> that should be everybody's aspiration not to <laughs> never go back to fast food. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, my, oh, yeah, that's like a, that's a well, my last question for you before we get up out of here is, what do you think the next generation of women in trucking is going to look like? Like, yeah. Um, and then they could look like anything. I think uh, when I first started driving trucks, one of the most annoying things I had ever heard, and I felt like one of the most disrespectful things that like somebody could tell, you know, female truck drivers, you don't look like a truck driver. And I felt like that was kind of messed up because, you know, I'm kind of guilty of it myself. And everybody always pictured, you know, a female truck driver being a big woman, you know, maybe with short haircut, you know, probably a lesbian. And I, I think that, you know, we, people should stop making that stereotype. You know, not all truck drivers are fat, you know. Truck drivers, there's they're all kinds of different diversities of people. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, dry. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your uh, sharing your time with me today. I really do appreciate it. What uh what what advice 
or tips that you can give the the new female drivers that's coming out in this industry? What what advice would you give them? The biggest advice I can give somebody is to never listen to the people who say that you can't do it. Like prove them wrong. Like like, like make that your biggest goal in life is just prove all the naysayers. That's what's up. So there, there's going to be a lot of people that will try to talk you out of there. They're going to tell you, no, you can't do it. But the truth is, you can. As long as you believe in yourself, you can do anything you set your mind to. That is what's up. And that is one to grow on right there. Well, truck driving dial again, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me on the Lockout Man podcast, you can do that by hitting me up at lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can go over to Instagram where I found this young lady at and you can DM me and we can chop it up and set a date and get you in and get you rolling and we can come on and 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 say whatever you want to say if you guys want me to talk about anything or any topics or anything like that leave it in the gmail that's lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com and if you guys like this video make sure you give it a like you know what i'm saying give it a like i'm just saying now let me get you get all the other stuff out the way you can subscribe make sure you do that make sure you hit that bell you make sure you do that and hit that all button so you can get all the content that comes out. I am your humble host, Lockout Man, and this is Lockout Man Podcast. Thank you to my special guest, Driving for coming on today and chopping it up with us. And this is my cousin. Who who is that DJ like DJ Ryan Wolf is about to play us out. You guys take it easy, and y'all have a blessed day, and stay safe out there, y'all. All right.